Welcome to the Dog Storytime Podcast. If you'd like to hear the amazing stories of the dogs in our lives, this is the show for you. From the heartwarming to the head tilting, we share the stories of dog owners and their furry family members. And now your host, luxury fine art pet photographer and puppy whisperer, Kimberly Sarah Bucari. Hello, everyone. This is Kimberly Sarah Bucari, and welcome to the Dog Storytime Podcast. Today's guest is our good friend. I guess we can call her a friend, um, but she's actually one of my cousins, one of my very lovely cousins, and uh, we've known each other her whole life. This is Amy Simeone Garbarino. Amy is a real world pet detective. Yes, pet detective. Is that not awesome? <laughs> You've heard me. It's a pet detective, and here she is on our show. She and her amazing dog, Ziva, help owners find their missing cats. And today we're going to find out how all of that happens. Welcome, Amy and Ziva. Here we go. Amy, thank you for being here today. So tell us about your dog, Ziva. Ziva is a cat detection dog. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Did everyone hear that? She said cat detection dog. Tell us about that, Amy. Okay. So I use Ziva to help us find lost cats. Mm -hmm. So a few years back, I took a training um, on how to be basically a pet detective. Right. That's wonderful. And one of the tools that I use is my dog. So Ziva is trained to do an area search um, and find any cat that is in that area. Wow. Wow. So what does it take to train her to do this? I mean, that's amazing. We started really slow um, when she was a puppy. So when we got her, we're like, we have a beagle. She needs to have a job. <laughs> and she has a good nose. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, so we started really simply just playing, you know, hiding treats, doing all that kind of stuff with her, um, eventually hiding cats. Okay. And have her find the cats. Um, she's gone to boot camp. There's a, a woman that I've studied with um, mm -hmm. that helped train her with me. Um, so she's done a lot of training in her early years. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, did you have to go far for the training or is someone like that local? She was in the state of Washington at okay. the time. Uh, so okay. she would come out here every couple of years to Connecticut and we would do the training with her there. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. And so how successful was she? How long did it take to train her? It took about two, about two years to really feel comfortable knowing that she was fully trained and I could take her out to help families. Um, right. We started training her as a very young puppy, mm -hmm. doing, you know, playing the games, all that kind of stuff. But really it was about me being confident um, me learning how to recognize what she's doing. Okay, um, and her signs that yes, she's giving you exactly. that she's on She to. needs to alert to different things, and I need to realize what, what that is that she's doing. Yeah. Um, so it took a good couple of years. Great. For so tell us about some of those signs. What is it that she'll do? Yep, and most people, when we go out to help them search, that's, that's exactly what they ask us. Um, it could be as simple as her tail. What is her tail doing? Um, oh. Is she running through the yard and her tail is up straight still? That means she probably doesn't smell anything right okay. there. She's just looking. Um, but when the tail starts going or she starts to whine, then ah. I know there's probably a cat there. Yep. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. So for those who, of course... Did, you know, we're, we're talking, so we're not, this isn't a visual program, but Ziva is a sweet girl. What does she weigh, Amy? She's 25 pounds. She's 25 pounds, so she's very petite. Um, she is the, your regular tri-colored adorable dog with this curly little teal up at the top. Um, so she's very sweet, and she's low to the ground, so she's got a good, she is, a good so advantage she's perfect to for sniffing that. around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people reach out to you. So you have a business, Amy. What's the name of it called? I do. Uh, we're Wandering Tales Pet Recovery. Wandering Tales Pet Recovery. So people reach out to you when their cat goes missing. Walk us through the steps of what happens next. 
when someone reaches out, I want to do a phone consult with them. So we'll plan about an hour, um, and I go over what I do <laughs> right. and how I can help them, but also educating them on lost cat behavior. Um, okay. Same as dogs. I would do the same for a dog person as well. Um, animals behave very differently when they're lost. Um, so it's educating the families on that and also educating them on what things they should be doing, things they should not be doing okay. to help bring their animal back home. Right, right. Um, so does that involve putting up posters? Does that involve talking to neighbors? Exactly. All of that kind of all of that kind of stuff. All of that. And Excellent. every situation is different. Um, sure. So sure. a lot of times it could be, you know, going yard to yard, looking in your neighbor's backyards under their decks. Right. And that's something that we can use Ziva for because she's small and she loves and to she, crawl under decks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, I mean, do you find that, because I'm curious, I guess I've, I've never really had a lost cat. Do you find that they travel very far from home? They don't. So lost okay. indoor only cats do yeah. not travel far at all. Okay. Um, we estimate, depending on what kind of neighborhood it is, anywhere from three to five houses right. within those first few days. Um, and that's why acting quickly yes. is really important. So yes. I'm really happy when families reach out within the first maybe 24, 48 hours, because um, there's a lot of things that we can do at that point. Right. So. so Ziva must be somewhat of a hero when the cat <laughs> is found. What um, what do the families say? How do they how do they react? I mean, it must be quite something. Yeah, some people are a little skeptical. Sure, and they'll be like, "Well, we'll give it a try." Okay. But then when they see her out there and they see how much she loves working, yeah. because we'll drive up to a house and she knows she knows that mom's she's working. Green yeah. duffel bag is in the car. This means we're oh, going to work. Right, right. Um, so she's already whining. She's ready to go. Yeah. yeah, can barely sit while I put the harness on her. Um, but yeah, but they, and they understand it as we're going. So okay, a search for us might be two or three hours. Sure. So we've spent that time with the family and they see what Ziva's doing and they really start to understand. Um, and we also use her to tell us when a cat's not there. Okay. So if we're doing the search, I mean, yes, we've yep. had walk-up finds or we yep. know that they're hiding underneath, you know, cargo containers that we can't move. Right, right. <laughs> but at can't least get now we them. know that, yep. that they're there. Um, she can also tell us when they're not there. So okay. if she's not alerting to anything and yeah. you've just spent two hours walking around, right. you know, a radius around your house, I'm like, your cat's not, okay. not here right now. We need to okay. focus on other things. So, yeah, so you move that search out yes. to a further yep. perimeter. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. What made you want to get in to do this with Ziva? I knew about Cat Albrick mm -hmm. um, when we got Ziva, um, and that's a, the woman who who trained me, I took her classes. Right. Um, I mean, it was really about wanting Ziva to have something to do. Yes. I'm a firm believer that dogs are happy <laughs> when they're using their dog brains and, did, and everything. Yes, yep. yes. They're happy um, when they have a job. Yeah. They're yep. happy to make you happy too. Yep. <laughs> so I would assume that that is all part of it, sure. is that she gets a lot of praise and oh, you know from us from the families yes yes, yes. Yep. and that's kind yep. of what dogs are about right they're all they're all <laughs> for that if it's not food then it's companionship yep. and, and kudos yep. Yep. <laughs> now does ziva have any um other tricks or any any other fun things that she does i know she has some furry family members she does uh we have quite a few cats in the house yes um but she also has a sister Bia, who's a coon hound, and yes. a little brother, Gibbs, he's a shih tzu. Great. Um, she is in charge, of course. Yep. But yeah, no, but they, they're they great together. We go out Good. on hikes. Um, Good. She loves so, doing all that stuff. Yeah, so yeah. what do you do with her? Um, really long walk. She okay. loves going out, being, we're in Massachusetts, so yep. we do a lot of the state parks there, out in the woods. Um even when we're out sometimes in the woods, we'll play little games with her. Oh, like good. one of us will run off and hide and she'll have to find us. Yep. Uh, when we take the kids out, you know, yeah. we'll do stuff like that with her. So, <laughs> right. yeah. So knowing Ziva, um, I know she's a love bug. I mean, she just loves being with her people. Um, but she seems to have a very independent mind as well. 
So I think that's something that everyone can kind of appreciate in a dog. <laughs> Amy, tell us about um, tell us about your other pups at home. Tell us about Bia. Sure, Bia's a very chill yep. coon hound. Um, she was a rescue dog. She was born in Virginia and made her way up through Massachusetts. So within her first year of life, I think she lived in four different states oh, and wow. a few different shelters. Um, she was a really hard to place because of her separation anxiety. Okay. Uh, it was really hard when people who were trying to have her it, it still adopt had to her. leave and go to work yep. and there's times out of yep. in and out of the house. Um, yeah. So it was very yeah. destructive almost to a point where yeah. she would hurt herself too. So oh, goodness. Um, yeah. So we ended up keeping her because she was really comfortable in our house. She was supposed to be a, a, foster. a foster. So she this was is a foster, foster failure, failure yeah. but that's okay. Everyone's <laughs> familiar with how that yes. goes. Because yes. <laughs> uh, she loved having everybody around her. Yeah. Um, the yeah. cat, she loves the cats. Good. Kittens. Good. She has we had a litter of kittens two years ago, and she took it upon herself to pretty much raise them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so one of them is hers. Every day she... You yeah. know, cleans it and plays oh, with it my and goodness. all that stuff. So, She's yeah. a sweet girl. Yep. She's a sweet girl. Yep. Now, she tried to be a pet detective as well. How did that turn out for Bia? Not, not very good for Bia. <laughs> yeah. And what, why was that? She was great at finding things. She just needed to do it at her pace, okay. which is not good if I'm out you know, in the field trying to track a dog who's probably already gone 10 or 12 miles right. at her pace, that would not work. Right. Um, so it's really about, you know, I thought I was choosing a good search mm-hmm. dog, um, mm-hmm. it, but not every dog is, well, that's it, is right? cut out for that. So I, so, I mean, I hear from other people, Amy, that, um, They've tried to work with their dogs to do something or train their dog because they thought that, you know, because of a specific breed, that they should be doing something. Have you found that to be true? And it sounds like with Bia, maybe not, but with Ziva, definitely so. Do you do you find that training a dog is, you do it more towards their personality and what they like to do? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely more about their personality and the drive that they have. Um, Ziva, the dog we use now, is a beagle rat terrier. Yeah. Very. (laughs) So that's, yeah. (laughs) Motivated, driven. Um, But that's also her personality. Bia is a coon hound, so you would think. So you would think. That she's got a lot of energy. Um, But she... She just she uses just didn't it want differently. Yeah. 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 So it's good It's good that you recognize that and don't push her to do something that she's not inclined to yes, do on her own. Yes, because if they don't enjoy it, they're mm-hmm. not going to do well for you, um, especially in our fields. If people don't have the confidence in you, you're really doing a disservice to everybody. The animal you're looking for, the family you're trying to help, the dog doesn't want to do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, pick so, the right, one. right. Right. So I don't think I asked you this, though. How did Ziva, how did, how did you get Ziva in your life? So we got her. She was from Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Um, at that point in time, Pet Finder was really yep. big. Yep. Um, and I saw that she was up for adoption with her five other sisters. Her mom was okay. a stray. Um, a family took her into their barn, let her have the puppies there, and then they all went to a rescue. Uh, so really, it was sort of beginner's dumb yeah. luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> that we should, yeah. Right? Yep. That, so was she transported up here and you she met was. the transport or how did that, Yeah. So my dad and my sister actually met the transport because I was very new to the dog rescue world and I didn't really understand how this worked. And I said, well, that day doesn't work for us. Can we do another day? And I think she was like, we need to lose this girl's application (laughs) fast. Um, Yeah. So my dad actually went up with my sister to get Ziva and brought her to us. Um, And she, so we met her with about 30 other people at our house because that day we we're having an event for my husband. So we had all these people over the house yes. um, and she was fine. Great. She got passed around. She weighed eight pounds. You know, she just got passed <laughs> just around. a little peanut. It was a great welcoming. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very good. So she got welcomed into the big, beautiful family that you have. Yes. <laughs> so no wonder why she's great with yeah. so many people. <laughs> So, Amy, I'm going to ask, what is it like a day in the life, shall we say, of Ziva or or a pet detective? Walk me through that. 
Well, when we show up to the house, um, we'll walk with the family. So we'll do the search around their house. Um, and Ziva's really, she's kind of in charge. She's the one, she's out front. So she is on a very long, bright orange lead. Um, and if anybody goes in front of her, like the pet parent, you know, starts looking under things or whatever, she has to be right there. So if she sees us all kneeling to look under a shed, mm -hmm. which is a super place for cats <laughs> to hide, right, right. Uh, she gets really mad. She wants oh. to be there. Her head, is, she's digging. Her head has to be under that okay. shed before any of us. Um, okay. If we pull her back, she'll start to whine. She right. just really wants to be involved in the moment. Right, um, right. Well, she knows yep. her job, so she, she wants to do it. <laughs> so she just wants to do it. Yeah. That's yep. great. Yeah. That's great. Would you encourage other people to take on this profession? I would. Yeah. I would. And there's different parts of it, too. Um, there's shelter people. Um, so when people are calling in because their cat's lost, obviously one of the first places, or even their dog right. as well, one of the I'm first places. someone else has found them. And yes, yes. Yep. Yep. you want to call the shelter. There's trainings just for shelter people to give good information. Okay. Um, and that's something that is really important just to start the whole process off on the right foot. Mm -hmm. um, having the shelter staff know how to deal with it. Um, but sure, if somebody... <laughs> Yeah. As a dog that they think would love working, absolutely. Right. Yep. Great. Yep. Great. And how much time do you think overall, Amy, that you had to dedicate to Ziva's training? Oh, at least you really have to do a couple hours a week. Okay. Um, and for her training, it's really years. Um, yeah. And it's ongoing, too. So you never want her to get stagnant. Um, during the winter, we'll do trainings, early okay. spring, right before our busy season. Um, we're doing trainings, asking people, hey, can I borrow your cat? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Put him in a carrier and you bring him to a park or something like that. Um, it's really just keeping her motivated. Right. So I, I do remember seeing you've had some videos um, on social media where you do have a cat in a carrier or something and you are, you know, going behind a building and, and making this kind of scent trail. Um, and Ziva does not know that this is, you know, what you're doing. And then she's kind of released to do her job with you. And it's quite amazing to see how she actually puzzles that all out. Now, here you are out in an open area with what I can only imagine to be millions upon millions of scents that a dog picks up on. Um, it's always amazing to me to see how that works. Is that the typical way that something in your training that's what you progress to is getting outside and and creating those trails for yes Ziva to follow yes. yeah. you're, you're referring to um, some training we did two years ago with her on um, tracking so when okay. I use her on a normal basis it's yeah. not so much tracking but an area detection I okay kind of, sort of like a drug detection dog or a bomb detection yes. dog but we did do some tracking with her um, which she is very good at and that is, yes, so then that's that progression of being out in an open space where people have walked. Right. <laughs> Maybe the trail is now a couple hours old. Mm -hmm. um, but what you want every dog to have is that enthusiasm. So when yeah. you see her, you know, jumping up at the she, leash yeah, because the whining, you're still holding. The yep. Yes. <laughs> yep, that's what you want. That needs to be innate. And then everything after that just yeah as a progression of all her training yeah, yeah that's great now i have to ask this because i'm sure our listeners will want to know does she wear a cape <laughs> <laughs> does she have a particular uniform that she wears as a pet detective maybe a little badge or something she does she, she, has, does. Her, <laughs> she has her little orange vest wonderful to search dog. Right. yes <laughs> yep. and your dog too can have a cape yep. yes <laughs> Amy, this has been a ton of fun. I'm going to ask you, like we ask all our other guests, what's your snout out? It would be for Missing Animal Response Network. Okay. Um, and that is the organization that I'm a member of now that did all our training. Wonderful. Um, we'll have the way that you can contact them in the show notes. Perfect. And what kind of information can they find out? And so this is about training your own dog to do this type of work? It's a little or of everything. How, okay. it, it does offer training. Um, it offers a national 
pet detective directory, which Great. actually we have people in other parts of the world as well now too. Okay, wonderful. Um, and also what a lost pet parent can do right away. Good. So, so like you said quick earlier, tips. time is of the essence to get yes. started as soon as you can. Yes, with exactly. Great. Excellent. Amy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kim. I and really thank you it. for bringing Ziva because now I'm going to go have some puppy time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Dog Storytime Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a minute to leave a review. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss all the exciting episodes we have coming up soon. If you want to learn more about our podcast and Kimberly's work with dogs, head over to KimberlySarahPhotography.com. Thank you for listening.